Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com. There's my phone number and my website. So, I'm waiting on parts for three amplifiers. Another two being delivered today. So I have a little bit of a break here. I had a, uh, was a uh, Swan Mark II. It was really butchered up by the person before me who worked on it. Not the owner, but ended up cooking the uh, transformer in the external uh, power supply cabinet, which uh, handles uh, has a low voltage winding, also the plate and filament winding. So the uh, transformer is sourceable, but a customer did not want to replace it. So fortunately, uh, I won't be fixing that. Yet. Okay, so I had some time to work on my multi-band amp so I finally have the front panel finished and I'm going to show it to you so here's the back of it I reused the old wiring harness things all zip tied nice nice I have four sets of these meters I ended up getting rid of uh, what was it one switch or was it two switches oh yeah two switches so the one that flips between forward and reflect, I'm just going to have the meter in the front measure forward power. I'll have an external meter, that uh, bird watcher meter for forward and reflect. This will also have all the protection circuitry, so it's just kind of for show. I could always change that meter out to something else, have it rescaled. I'll go over that when the panel's installed. I'll sh I'm going to do that next and I'll show you guys. I'll, I'll talk about it and show you what I'm talking about. So. I also got rid of the uh, remote local switch that's not needed. It has the the button to reset the protection and the standby operate switch and also the rotary switch for the multimeter. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and install it onto the front of the amplifier and I'll uh, I'll be right back. See you soon. Okay, here it is. All that hard work finally paid off. So I'm going to explain some stuff here. I'm going to label it. I don't trust sending it out to get it silk screen. That's just not going to happen. If something happened to it, that would just be horrible. So I'm going to figure out a way to uh, figure out a nice way to label it. As for the meters, they're going to be rescaled. As I've said multiple times, I have multiple sets of these meters. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the backing plates out of one of the replacement sets and I'm going to send them to Ram Meter. They're an awesome company. I've used them for years. They're down south. I forget what state, but they do all sorts of meter work. They're cool people down there. They just do awesome work. Uh, so I'll take the backing plates out of the other meter, send them to them, and I'm going to have them scale each one to my needs and you know actually with the uh, backing plate scale I'll have to set the scaling with the resistors I think they're on the protection board they're all 100 microamp meter movement meters for the power meter I think I'm going to send one of the meters and line section directly to bird and have them calibrate the meter to a slug I'm thinking a 12 kilowatt slug and I'll have them 12 or 15 um, you don't want it to uh, you don't want the slug to be way bigger than what you'd ever need but uh, you know this sample produced 12 so I think I'll go with the 15 and uh, also have another one made that would you know uh, you know be half of that so I could have either use the 15k slug I'll never be using it at that level but the ample pre produce uh, is being made to be able to produce that at the power level of 12 kilowatts but uh, I'll have one made uh, half of at half of 15 so I can stick that one in and during normal operation like legal limit it won't be like at the beginning of the scale like if I you know decided to use the 15 kilowatts so that's that this is the multimeter that'll read uh, film of voltage and uh, some other stuff like the uh, low voltage supply voltage all that stuff so you got the input circuit Pi network adjustments they're gang to vernier reduction drives 
So I'll have a cheat sheet so I can easily set the input SWR between the amp and the transceiver and this is for the input rotary switch which is a progressively shorting type out of a TL922 amplifier the output rotary switch so it's overkill handle it no problem here's the output rotary switch you know the band switch for the output network which is like I've said before it's a modified 40 amp switch so it's rated for 80 amps and you have the the plate Here's the plate and the load controls. Uh, consist of vacuum variable capacitors. No padding whatsoever, plenty of range. And uh, I've already explained what these are. That's the reset switch for the protection circuit. It'll have grid and plate overload circuits. The board uh, has opto isolators. It came in this amp originally. It was a uh, This started off as a RF generator with an 8877. So in order to use these meters, I need, in, you know, I need to use the board. So why not get the uh, protection circuit working? If this is using a 3.6-6000. I mean, it's going to be protected up the yin-yang. I could technically operate this remote and wouldn't have to worry about it if there was a fault. It would just shut down. And if I wanted to get it really elaborate, I could. <laughs> I mean, the sky's the limit, you know. This will be going in a cabinet and uh, slides out on casters. I could always bolt a servo setup on the front of the cabinet and couple it to the uh, shafts and have it auto-tune if I really wanted to at some point. But I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, I just wanted it to be indestructible or pretty close to it. Nothing's totally indestructible, but this will be pretty darn close to that level. So... So that's that, and uh, this is the standby operate switch. I got rid of the remote local switch that wasn't needed, and the forward reflect switch. So that is about it, I think. This was a lot of work. Oh, another thing, there's a bottom cover that has a lip on it that folds over. That's what these holes are for. It's very RF, this is a very RF tight enclosure. Just. Very well built, eighth inch thick material. So same for the top. Top cover has a lip, and that's what these holes are for. And I used plastic washers behind the screws so it doesn't gouge the paint. I had to let this set for a few days. Just wanted it to fully cure. It's epoxy type paint. Um, same thing behind these and all the feed through bushings. I used the proper size washers. So. She's good. So, I have some other stuff to do today, but the next step on this is uh, counting the turns uh, for each turn to capacitance change ratio. So write it all down. And then, I just have to install the plate blockers real quick. Actually, I have to figure out if I, I can get one of these to fit or if I'm going to have to buy some. I think I'm going to have to buy four or 500 puff ones and I'll just stuff those in there. Um, but uh, just a lot of other stuff going on and I don't like rushing. You know, this, is, uh, this isn't a copy of something. This is something that I've dreamed of in my head and I'm just, uh, you know, making, it, you know, the... The, the thought into reality, you know, so it's like, uh, so, you know, you have to really think it out before you do anything because, you know, you don't want to make mistakes, so, so far, so good, oh, as far as this, uh, I thought about putting an indicator here, but the, the, uh, sprocket, I mean, the, not the sprocket, yeah, the, I guess the sprocket's right behind it for the, uh, plate side, um, back in variable drive setup, so, I I have some hole plugs. I think I might just put a white hole plug in there, but I, you know I might put an indicator there. I can do that last minute. I have wiring right there. I can tap into that would feed back to where the protection board is. But I didn't show it. But actually, let me show you the back here. As you can see, very clean. Actually, I had to add some of those sticky pad things and zip tie the wiring for the harness up against the front panel so 
there would be no interference with any of the chain drive setups. So, I need to put the new phenolic piece in actually for the band switch. As I said, the uh, white stuff was cracked. The uh, seal tight, or I forget what, it's like a ceramic material, it was cracked and it broke. So, uh, I'm replacing it with the G10 epoxy rod. And uh, that won't take long, just have to cut it and then put that back together. So, that's about it. So, if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. This is a personal amp. This is just a project because I have pretty much all the parts and that'd be fun. And uh, I haven't seen anyone else making YouTube videos on something like this. So, figured it'd be a cool thing to do. So, but uh, thanks again for watching. If you want to see more, please hit the like, share, subscribe. You know, with the subscribe uh, button, you know, you hit that, then you will get a, uh, well, you should get a notification via email or whatever that I posted another installment of this. So, again, thanks for watching and have a great day. 73.